after all this time, after all the months that you've been waiting, I finally have the review of the century. A review of my favourite book, Let the Right One In. Now why is it my favourite book? Well, to explain that, I'm just going to tell you the synopsis. A 12 year old boy meets a 12 year old girl. Except that the 12 year old girl is in reality a 200 year old vampire living inside a 12 year old girl's body. You might be thinking to yourself, that is so fecking weird. And I thought the same. I thought that sounds weird, it sounds bizarre. It's the weirdness that brings you in that opens you up to the human story. It sounds weird, but once you get past the weirdness, once you get into the dark world that Linkvist? Linkvist? Let's go with Linkvist. Once you get into a dark world that Linkvist creates, well, that's when you discover the human element. And that's the bit that I really enjoy. But first I need to set up some context. So, without further ado. Tracing the light of a silhouette. Way that you light up a cigarette. Still low. Sweden. To set up the context for this book, I need to explain. It's gonna get dark. Really feckin' dark. This book is dark because it's part of what is called Nordic fiction. Nordic fiction is basically dark fiction set in Scandinavia. It's very bloody, it's very brooding, depressing. And I love it. I love the stuff. I think Scandinavian setting, which is these dark pine forests, dark mountains, it's in this dark setting that these stories are created. The most mainstream of this kind of Nordic fiction is probably Big Larson's Millennium Trilogy, you know, the girl with the dragon tattoo, the hornet's nest. Played with Fire being my favourite out of all those books. They're not as dark as Linkvists, and they're probably more accessible in that way. But now we have the setting, which is Stockholm, by the way, in a suburb in Stockholm. A concrete suburb. Ne need I say more? Not much going on there. And within that suburb, we can explore the characters. Now, I'm not going to talk about all the characters, because one thing Linkvist does very well is have a lot of fleshed out characters. I'll talk about the protagonist first. Os Oscar. Oh, sorry, not Oscar. It's, um, it's Oscar. Oscar, the Swedish version. So I'm going to call him Oscar instead. <laughs> yes, it's Oscar. And he's a, a sad little boy. He's bullied. He pisses himself. I think he's gonna go a certain way, and it doesn't. And this is kind of in relation to every character arc, now I think about it. That's the thing, you gotta take my word for it here, but characters are very fleshed out. And even the ones who are um, more villainous, or giving one away, which isn't too much of a spoiler, called um, Hacken. Yes, I believe that's his name, Hacken. He's a pedophile. He's into kids. And that does lead to really fucked up scenes, trust me. Not too fucked up, don't worry, don't worry, I know what you're thinking. But even characters like that, Linkfist manages to make you feel somewhat sympathetic towards. Which takes a real talent, it really does. But the characters in this book are kind of hard to talk about because Linkfist's writing style, it hops between the characters. A well known example would be Game of Thrones. Jumping between characters, if you read the book, it's structured very similar in the way of the show, you know, it'll jump from one character, stay with them for a couple scenes, and jump to another. It's like that per chapter. But Linkvist, he hops between characters in the chapter, in a scene. You could be reading one char character's perspective, and I'll swap to another, and then another. Another one. That's what um, is called, I believe, omnipresent writing. I'm gonna check that, actually. Yes, omnipresent POV in the writing style. And that's very hard to pull off, it's very tough. But he manages to do it. Once again, Linkvist pulls it off. Let's move on to the vampire stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, I know a lot of people are kind of sick of vampires. It's kind of become a fad now. Uh, a passing fad, I should say. I'm sure it will come back again in strength, but recently, Twilight, True Blood, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I think we had our vampire splurge, and we're sick of it now. And certainly, this book came out in 2004, but it's not what you think. This book actually takes on the vampire trope, subverts the shit out of it. It doesn't have any glittery vampires, it doesn't have big secret brooding grips or any nonsense like that. Instead it tells a very real and um, what I imagine would be a very realistic uh, depiction of vampires if they really did exist. 
The vampire stuff isn't very over the top, in fact it's about as subtle as you can get away with by still calling it a vampire bit. But there's some very gory scenes in this. The detail that goes into some of the violence. There's not much violence, but when it happens, you really feel it. There's a real crunch behind every description. You can really get lost in it. But it's not even the vampires or dark mythical monster stuff. That's the best thing about this book. The best thing about this book is the human element. I'm gonna keep my arms down. The darkness that humanity is capable of, this book shows it off perfectly. And that's the real monster of the story. I see, we got depression, we got pedophilia, we got isolation, we got bullying, we got absent fathers, we got alcoholism. My god. It almost sounds dark when you list it all off at once. I found an interview of Lindquist where he talks about the villains. The three uh, bad guys, the ones who bully the protagonists, uh are in a way portraits of the same guys who bullied me when I was young. They even have the same names. And in the end of the story, I won't tell you the end exactly, but um, they get the reward. Oh, I love them. It was a great, great joy writing that scene. <laughs> a great joy. I can't do, I can't do the Swedish accent. That reminds me of there is a movie about this book. Well, that's where the poster's from. There's a great trailer. <laughs> Du vampire. These great quotes. Do watch Swedish with English subtitles. That's the best way to enjoy it. If you are after a good movie, let the right one in 2008. But finally, yes, finally I'd like to get to the main reason why this book goes beyond the normal task. Blinkfist builds this dark, dark story. And this protagonist and the people around him who are, they're not happy. They're really miserable at times. And I think it's so grounded as well, a lot of the misery is not caused by monsters, it's caused by just humanity and everyday life. But it's within this darkness that we get the connection between Ellie, the 200 year old vampire and a 12 year old body. We get the connection between her and Oscar. And it's that small little connection. Now, it's a shining ray of hope because these two people who are so isolated, who feel so miserable, are able to find happiness with each other. It's a nice dream and I think it's something a lot of us, even if we're not willing to admit, would really like. Not, not me, of course. I'm alright happy. It's a really nice message. It does bring hope. These two are balls. Find happiness with each other. No, those on the fringe of society, I suppose. And that's the main reason why I recommend this book to people. It is dark, it is sad, but there is the happiness within it. You know, it's unlike Linkfist's other book, I read Little Star, which has no real happiness. It's just, ugh, it's depressing. But let the right one in. It's a lot more accessible. You just get lost in it so quickly. And so I would really recommend it. Go out now, buy a book, buy this book, don't, not any book, this book. <laughs> no reason I made this video. I want more people to read it. I want to talk with more people about it because it is my favourite book. And I promise you, if you're not the faint of heart, you will love it. You will enjoy it. With that being said, thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully I'll see you again soon.